authors and please ask him uh, anything that you consider relevant. Lachnik and uh, well, the uh, microphone is yours. Buenos dias to all of you. Um, this is a special day for me, so I'm happy to be here for it. Um, I, I, when uh, I told my board that I will be uh, stepping down, and they said, okay, so are you going to be available for press interviews on Thursday and all of this? I said, no, I'm going to Lima, because I promised I will be with our community. And I'm happy to be here, very happy to be here. Uh, let me start by telling you the following. The importance of me being here today is because LACNIC and its sister organizations, APNIC, represented here by its uh, leader, as well as the other uh, organizations in this family that is responsible for the logical layer of the Internet are really at the heart of everything we're doing, including the transition. Without the partnership and the common principles we share with LACNIC and APNIC and the IETF, we have nothing. So this is very critical, and that's why I'm here today. Uh, my fellow CEOs of the RIRs, of course, LACNIC being one of them, met me in Singapore and they said, Fadi, you've been CEO of ICANN for three years, but you've never attended an RIR meeting. And that's true. <laughs> it's just with my schedule, I have not been able to. And so I promised them I will in the first half of this year. And this is my first meeting with the RIR community. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, of course, Oscar is maybe a little proud because I picked LACNIC, but I am proud that I picked LACNIC, and I'm very happy to be here uh, to support Oscar's new leadership of this excellent institution that Raul left in perfect shape and now brought uh, a great leader to follow him. Uh, so thank you, Raul, and thank you, Oscar, for your leadership, and thanks to each one of you for your membership. When I describe ICANN today, I didn't used to. But when I describe ICANN today, I describe this family. I say ICANN is just one institution amongst many. It is not a first amongst equals. It's an equal with many. And this institution is strong because it has members like you. You know, over 4,000 members at LACNIC alone. That's the community. You are what ICANN stands for. And therefore, I'm here today to support that. So thank you, Oscar, for the invitation. Thank you for welcoming me. I'm very happy to be here. I've been told to talk about multiple things. So I'm going to let you vote what you want me to talk about. And we can come up with more things if you want. But I've heard that you want me to talk about the transition from the US government. That's subject number one. How many people want me to talk about that, unless you're tired of it? OK, let's say maybe half the room wants me to talk about that. Some people want me to talk about ICANN itself and what it is and how it functions with the RIRs and so on. So a bit about ICANN and its globalization. How many people would like me to touch on that as well? OK, less people, fine. So maybe we leave that till the end. And some people ask me to speak about the importance of your work to make sure the digital economy. And the digital economy is no longer just an economy. It is the driver of global growth today, and I'm very engaged in some of the circles that are just now looking at how to strengthen the digital economy. How many people would like me to touch about that a little bit? Okay, a little more. All right, so we'll make that our uh, number two or number one subject. And finally, of course, some people want me to talk about my departure from ICANN. I hope no one wants me to talk about this. <laughs> But anyone wants me to talk about that? Please not. <laughs> OK, a few people want me to talk about it. OK, I'll touch on that at the very end. Any other subjects? Anybody wants to raise a very critical subject that you want me to touch on in the half hour I have before we take questions? Any other subject? OK, so I'll take them in order quickly about the digital economy. 4.2 trillion US dollars 
the size of the digital economy by next year, according to Boston Consulting Group. And that's only in the G20 economies. But that number belies the truth here, because the digital economy may be 4.2 trillion, and many of your companies empower that. But the reality is that the internet is no longer a horizontal sector. It is now a, pardon me, it's no longer a vertical sector, it is now a horizontal sector. It actually affects everything. I call it the Uberization of every industry. Right? Uber changed the transport sector, and look what happened in the world. I was in Spain and Barcelona recently when the government said, no more Uber in Barcelona. And I'm telling them, what kind of response is this? You know, and they're saying, we just don't know what to do. Because Uber changed that sector overnight. Now, Uber is an example of a very small sector. Imagine when the internet starts changing the financial sector, the supply chain sector the manufacturing sector. The OECD representative at Columbia University last week said two-thirds of global trade is now distributed, highly distributed, right? Which means, he said, all these companies cooperate to deliver service or cooperate to deliver a product. And he said all of that is enabled by the internet. So two-thirds of global trade. <laughs> This is very important to understand. Therefore, the digital economy is both a vertical and a horizontal. What does that mean? It means the political and powerful circles of the world are now stepping in to figure out how to control these levers. That's exactly what will happen. When you have so much money rolling and so much effect on public policy, and so much effect on people, on citizens. Powers are trying to figure out how do they play in that space. And it's very important to think a little bit about our layer, the layer that LACNIC, IETF, ICANN, APNIC manage, right? This is called the logical technical layer of the internet. Many of you ISPs here manage the physical infrastructure. Above that is our layer, the logical layer. Who wants to control that layer? Who controls it today? Now, if I sat down with Oscar and Paul and my colleagues who function in that layer, I think we would all agree we control that layer. This is you, the members. Tell us what to do with that layer. This is the power of our bottom-up multi-stakeholder model, is that you tell us what to do. Yet, ICANN, which is the coordinator of that layer, has the US government basically overseeing what we do. I no longer think this is sustainable. And that will get me into the transition in a moment, but the end of the US government role with us is the end of the control of one government or frankly any group of governments in what we do. The control should be in the hands of the members, of the stakeholders, of all of you that should decide what happens in that layer. So as the digital economy grows, the pressures to take control of things will grow as well. And it is incumbent upon us to show that we are prepared and mature and ready and have processes that work, obviously. Obviously. How many people in the political class know what's happening in this room? How many people understand how LACNIC works and how it coordinates beautifully the fair distribution of these identifiers in Latin America? We need more people to understand that and to appreciate that and let us do our work, which we have done, I think, with distinction for many years. Let me switch a little bit to the transition. I just explained to you the political and important reason for the transition, which is to make sure no one government has particular control. Remember, if one government has particular control, other governments will ask, why not us? How do you explain to China that the U.S. will decide when dot Beijing will be added to the root zone? Why should the U.S. government be the only one deciding if dot Beijing will be added or not? It doesn't make sense. And therefore, it has come time for the U.S. government to step back from that unique role and make the work we do at LACNIC, APNIC, IETF, ICANN, etc., to make that work neutral and independent from any one power 
And by the way, we speak often about governments. We also don't want one particular powerful business to control what we do. That's equal control. So the, the power of what we do it lies in this bottom-up multi-stakeholder model that starts with you. You are the feet, the stability of that model. Where are we with the U.S. transition? First, we had to get the U.S. government, after 16 years of their oversight, to say, we're willing to take our hands off. That was quite a bit of work that many of us worked on. And in March of last year, with approval from the White House on March 14th, it was a quite a momentous afternoon at 2 p.m. Uh, my time in California, the U.S. government said, good announced that we are ready to step away. And what did they do? They asked us, they asked you, each one of us, to come up with a proposal to replace them, to replace their role. And we have been working hard at that. I will tell you, I'll be uh, teaching very soon in, in a couple of universities on what happened and the history of that change. And I must tell you, the work you did and still doing now to finalize this proposal will be written down in history as one of the most amazing global multi-stakeholder efforts to define a governance model that does not have one party controlling. This is powerful. This doesn't exist in any other space. Tell me if climate or environment or energy, any other space where businesses, governments, uh, civil society, academics, technical people have been able to work together for all these months and put together a proposed governance model that keeps all of us in charge. That's very powerful, and we're almost done. That proposal, in my uh, personal opinion, will be completed by the end of this year and delivered to the U.S. government. We cannot miss that window. This is an important window. It doesn't mean we cut corners, and we haven't been cutting corners, but we have to deliver this proposal to the U.S. government by the end of this year. And my hope is that we can do it together at the ICANN meeting in Dublin, but hopefully no later than uh, Christmas this year. Once the U.S. government receives the proposal, they then have to decide if it's good or not good. They have that final decision. And we're working very hard with Congress with uh, even some of the presidential contenders for the next election, because they'll be busy next year. We're working with different parts of the US government to make sure that we meet their criteria and there is no surprise next year. And I think, uh, I believe that I have confidence that we will come through with a proposal that meets their criteria. So all is good, all is good in that regard. You told me not to talk about ICANN, so I won't talk about ICANN. But I want to talk about something important. And this is, as CEO of ICANN for three years, and today having announced that uh, within 10 months or so I will step down, I can speak very openly and candidly. I'm a little freer today to say what I'm about to say. The most... Uh, difficult thing for me has been over the last three years to understand the cardinality of my relationship, ICANN's relationship, with the regional internet registries like LACNIC and IETF. I must tell you, and many uh, top-level domain operators and CC top-level domain operators, many of whom I understand are also in the room. This was difficult for me. It took time. And uh, regrettably, it almost took me all three years. <laughs> I'm finally at the point where I understand the place of ICANN in that network, in that larger community, not just the ICANN community, which sometimes is very naming-centric, but to think of the broader community that includes LACNIC and APNIC and IETF, all these great organizations that work in concert with common principles with common principles. This is the greatest learning that I want to pass on to my successor. I want to sit down with him and explain to him not to take three years to get what took me three years, the importance of working with you, to start thinking of each of you in this room, members of LACNIC, as actually 
very much the same community I'm part of. Not Blacknick alone, APNIC alone, the RIRs alone, the regional internet registry, and then the IETF alone and ICANN alone. We're all one. And it is our collective unity and strength that is what the U.S. government is handing the control to. We should not lose sight of that. That is the biggest learning that I want to pass to my successor. I'm a very hands-on CEO. So lest anyone think that for the next 10 months I will be uh, hanging at the beach in, in, uh, in Peru or in, uh, in Brazil with my good friends at CGI coming up now with, uh, with the Net Mundial meeting and also with, with the IGF meeting. No. It's, it's actually we're doubling down. I met all my staff this morning from here, from the hotel. I, I shared with them the news that I'm, uh, I'm stepping down in March. And I told them, and I tell you, because you are also very much part of our community. I'm serving you as much as I'm serving what is the traditional ICANN naming community. We are not going to let our fingers off the still. We're going to keep working as hard as we have been with the same energy with the same passion, with the same commitment to serve you and to make sure the world sees us as one community able to manage the affairs of the logical layer with distinction. Nothing changes. And it's not about me. I can is not about me and certainly this community is not about me and Oscar and Paul and my colleagues. It's about you. And any community, any organization that is dependent on a person or a group of person is not a mature institution. So the fact that I'm moving on is actually, should be not even a bump in the road. We show the strength of our institutions by carrying on, heads down, business as usual, getting the work done. So that's my ask of you uh, and my ask of all of us and my colleagues, Oscar and Paul, that the fact that I've announced that in 10 months I'll be uh, moving on uh, should mean, frankly, very little to this. Finally, just my hope is that when we're done and the U.S. government steps away, recognizing our readiness, that when we cross that finish line, maybe today for the first time I can use the word, when we cross that independence line, we cross it together. And I don't want to be in the front of that line. I want to be way in the back of that line. It's you who should cross it. It's not even ICANN who should cross it. It's all of us. It's LACNIC, it's APNIC, it's ITF, it's ICANN. We're one community. We cross that line and we show the world we deserve and we know how to be independently running this for the benefit of the global public interest without the control of any one country or any one party. Questions? Well, thank you. Thank you, Fadi. Do you want to stay I there? I can sit or? next to you. OK. So, uh, bueno, eh, si tienen algunas eh, preguntas, por favor, este, pueden hacerlas en los micrófonos. Eh, tengo algunas preparadas para que eh, se vayan animando, pero pues aprovechemos eh, la visita de Fadi, eh, eh, estas noticias y el proceso en el que... ...these news and the process we're in the midst of in order to clarify any doubts or questions that you might have. I will ask the questions in English. Uh, you mentioned that uh, in the communication that uh, uh, we should try to uh, deal with this like uh, business as usual. Uh, but uh, we've been through this uh, at least twice in the ICANN uh, lifetime. And uh, uh, what's different from those occasions? In, the, in those occasions, we've uh, uh, allocated a lot of resources and energy in the middle of uh, very relevant and fundamental processes like the new UTLDs, mm. the previous one. Now we are in the middle of uh, the IANA transition. Mm. What do you think is different from those occasions to now that uh, will ensure us, will guarantee us that we won't be di diverted from, from current uh, working? Two things. Two things are different. Let me make sure. My 
micrófono. ¿Está prendido este, tele, este micrófono? Number two. No. Should be. It's on. It's on. No. So, two things are different now. First and foremost, the ICANN institution itself is very different from the ICANN institution we had three years ago. When I started, ICANN had 120 people or so, uh, mostly in the United States and Europe. Asia, which has a billion users on the internet, had one person <laughs> sitting in Beijing. This is not the picture of the world. We completely changed the DNA of ICANN. Today, we're 350 people in 28 global locations. That's how we look like the world now. I divided our headquarters in three. We have three headquarters, Los Angeles for North and South America, Istanbul for Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and Singapore for Asia and Oceania. So we changed completely. I mean, Paul would tell you, we now have in Singapore north of 30 people serving our Asian stakeholders. We are a different ICANN. And within that globalization, we also made sure we have a management class that is quite deep. Believe me, if I decided to vacation in Lima for the next two months, ICANN will run equally as well, if not maybe better, some people may say. ICANN is solid. We have our CIO was the CIO of Walmart. Uh, our head of engagement was the CEO of Hill & Knowlton, one of the largest engagement and public relations firms in the world. We have a deep team of people. Our head of governmental affairs was Minister of Telecommunications of Egypt and a very strong bringer of internet across Africa. We have a deep team of people. We didn't have that. So when the transition to the new CEO was happening last time, we were getting ready. ICANN was, uh, in many ways, functioning well, but we had a lot of processes, systems, and people that were functioning in a startup mode, and today we're a deep institution. So I'm not, that's the first reason I think this will be different. The second reason this will be different, even though I am a latecomer to fully appreciate that, is frankly the interconnectedness that we have now with LACNIC, APNIC, IETF, is a, at a very different level. Without naming specific predecessors, the relationship has not always been most healthy, right, or understood. I arrived with all the right intentions, but without the understanding of the criticality of this partnership. It took me a little bit of time, but I'm there now, and I'm delighted to say that today we stand in a good place and in a better place. Our recent meeting in London of all the, the leaders of the technical community was superb. It was by far my best meeting with all of you. And it showed the strength of how we understand each other. And as long as I can, which maybe happens to have the deepest pockets and the most money and the most obvious presence, but if I can learn to stand in the back and be a true coordinator of where the work really happens, IP policy doesn't happen at ICANN. It happens in this room. It's what you decide that we implement. And if that understanding is there for the world, for me, for all of us, then we're much stronger when we enter the next phase. So that's why I'm less worried about the next phase. Of course, there are many other reasons. One of our distinguished board members is sitting here, Gonzalo Navarro. I can tell you that we have a stronger board, an engaged board, and a cohesive board. And that means the governance of the institution is solid. And they are the ones responsible to replace me. So having a, a good hand at the board and a solid board gives us comfort that they will manage a succession calmly and we will get through it without an issue. I have no doubt. Thank you. Thank you, Paddy. Uh, traveling to the future now, um, how do you think uh, success looked like in April 2016? How would you describe it? Success for the transition will mean that by the time we meet at the ICANN meeting in Marrakesh, which is middle of March next year, that 
the community has submitted the proposal to the U.S. government and the U.S. government has responded to that proposal. That would be, in my mind, success. Now, what will be the response? Of course, for me, success would be, for you, is that the U.S. government says this proposal meets the requirements and it's a good proposal. I can tell you today that there may be some conditional yeses from the U.S. government. I don't know. I'm, now I'm imagining that they may come back and say, good proposal, meets our criteria, but uh, you know, I can if you could do A, B, or C, or LACNIC if you could do A, B, or C, then we're good. Hopefully we won't have these conditions, but we might. And my, my hope is that any conditions the U.S. government will add at that time or any remaining requests they make for us would be, in my opinion, minor or hopefully things we can get done in two, three months. Uh, I'm not hoping they come back and they say, you know, uh, do this and it takes six years. <laughs> that would be a no answer for, for us. So again, my hope, success by next March, April would be proposal has been received and a clear response came from the United States government. Clear. Not one that says, mm, you know, we'll think about it. No, clear. If they don't want to do it, they should be clear. And if they want to do it, they should be clear. And if they have conditions, they should be precise about these. And again, my hope is that they're conditions that we can all embrace and they become more administrative than I would say strategic changes. Hello. Yep. Hi, Paul Wilson from, from APNIC. Um, thanks very much for the opportunity to ask a question. And um, thanks, Ch Ch uh, Vardy, for your um, um, amazing work and leadership of ICANN over the last, over the last few years. I've, I've often thought, actually, that watching you work has been a bit like um, eating an excellent meal where you go away and you don't think, well, I could make that at home. <laughs> you go away and you think, how did that guy do that? <laughs> Because honestly, I don't, um, I don't know how you've done the work that you've done. It's been, uh, it's been um, inspiring. Um, my question actually is about the comparison between the RAR community, the numbers community, and the names community, because you seem to have a, a very deep appreciation of what, what goes on in the numbers world. Mm. Um, the bottom-up community process, the fact that the, the autonomy and the self-determination exists here. And I'm just wondering, um, when you compare that with the names world, it's very different. Mm. Perhaps in the, in the early ICANN uh, model, there was the supporting organizations, and in theory, the DNSO, the DNS supporting organization was similar to the, or would have been similar to what the ASO has mm. been, which is a very separate set of processes. But mm. ICANN turned out differently. And I'm just wondering if you've got uh, thoughts about the health of that situation for ICANN and, and whether, whether there's a, a sort of a, a evolutionary path for ICANN that would make that um, the separation and the functionality in the, in the names world as, um, as neat and simple and as functional as it is in, uh, yeah. for, for us in this community. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Paul. Paul is my colleague and uh, someone I consider a good friend and has been a good guidance to me uh, in my understanding of how to do my job. So thank you for that, Paul. Thank you for your guidance and help over the years as well. Um, you ask a very important question about my view of how the names community, the people who connect your numbers to names, how the way they organize, uh, not just compares, but how it could potentially be, frankly, as uh, homogeneous and as it works here. You are a much more homogeneous community in the sense that you get the numbers, you, you have very specific business models to implement them. Uh, when you get to names, you start getting into public policy issues that become a bit more uh, contentious between groups that have different interests, right? Uh, I'll give you a simple example of my life over the last three years. Someone applied to get the top-level domain .islam. Who am I to decide if I should hand them .islam or not? They happen to be a Turkish company with investors from all over the Middle East. Who, who is the authority on that? Of course, we got a letter from the king of Saudi Arabia saying, 
don't give them that Islam. So you get into public policy issues that are complicated with names. Uh, one that is close to your homes. You may know a small American company called Amazon. They applied for dot Amazon. Last I checked, the Amazon is around here. And so we had an issue. They own the trademark, Amazon, in most of Latin America. But they don't own the Amazon, which is part of life here. Do we give them that Amazon? Do we follow the law? Do we fo what do we do? It's complicated. So these, those issues put us in a very, very difficult new space of public policy. And then you get into more complex things. You may have read the Wall Street Journal story a few we, months ago in which the Wall Street Journal was saying, I can should shut down internet pharmacies because somebody bought a medicine from a pharmacy online and passed away, died. Do you think ICANN should be deciding who's a good pharmacy and who's a bad pharmacy? Suddenly we're in the content business and the police of the internet. But last week in Congress there was a big hearing where people were saying, yes, ICANN should make these decisions. And if we come to ICANN and say, close this pharmacy or close this music shop, ICANN should, should close it. I don't think we should be in that business. I think we should be in the technical management of our layer. So as we get into these spaces, we get a community full of special interests. You have those who want to protect intellectual property. You have those who want to promote openness and freedom on the internet. We got the 100,000 uh, American citizens who are seniors, meaning old people, who sent me a letter saying, please don't shut down Canadian pharmacies because we get our medicine from there. It's a lot cheaper. So all of these decisions get us into a new space that makes ICANN complex. And therefore, I wish some days that I could have the homogeneity. Uh, but I think when you get into the public policy space, it gets a little more complicated. So, but we have a lot to learn from you. Because you are, in my opinion, a pure model of bottom-up work. You truly are. You, the members, tell him what to do. I don't think he has any illusion about that. And he loves that. You know, I'll share with you a personal moment I had with him, even though he may not like that. But I met him in Costa Rica recently. And it was the first time I have a one-on-one -on -one with him. And Oscar told me, Fadi, transition, transition, it doesn't matter. What really matters is the unity and the cohesiveness amongst us that we believe in this bottom-up model where you are in charge. And he says, if we lose our soul to get freed from the US government, I'm not sure that's a good price. It's kind of what he told me in his own words. And he really sent me away really thinking hard about how important that I be here, that I be with you, and that I spend more time with him and Paul and others so that we remain strong. And so that's the difficulty we have, Paul, and I think that's why the naming community has its job cut out. Very conflicting, difficult interests at play. Thank you, Fadi. So any other question from, from you? Um, I have uh, more questions, but uh, I would like you to um, uh, stand up and uh, approach to the mic and ask your own questions. Um, so, Fadi, um, you mentioned um, a few minutes ago when we met with the uh, La Casa de Internet leaders uh, that we are in the la last mile of this uh, IANA transition process. So, uh, sometimes in the last mile, we uh, uh, sit back and relax and make mistakes. So, what are the things that uh, uh, you think we should look carefully in order to not make that, that mistakes? Oscar is asking a, a very important strategic question. How do we avoid resting a little bit uh, while those who would like to scuttle or to slow down this transition and take more top-down control of what we do are running? We cannot stop running. 
and we have to be very alert. Let me think top of my mind, Oscar. I think first and foremost, I sound like a broken record, but our strength will be in our alignment with you, with the ITF. The, the, if ICANN steps too far in front of its community, which includes you, that will be a danger. So our, our working in unison, our strength will allow us to get through that line together more strongly. Number two, the other danger we have is if the issue of our management of these functions becomes over-politicized in Washington. If it becomes over-politicized and next year the U.S. happens to have a presidential election, we're going to have a potential issue. Because suddenly it be we become a political football in that political arena. So it is important for all of us to keep this issue from being over-politicized by emphasizing that the strength of what we do is because of you. We have thousands and thousands of people and members who are in charge here. And so long as Oscar and I don't implement policies that you did not give us, so long as we're rooted in you, we are strong. And that's the message we have to keep giving. And so politicians who say, I mean, I met uh, uh, three days ago. I was in the Bay Area in uh, Silicon Valley. And I had dinner with many leaders in the Silicon Valley, uh, including the CEOs of HP and many companies. We had a dinner together. And uh, we also had with us Condoleezza Rice, who used to be, who teaches at uh, Stanford. So she joined us for dinner. And I think at that dinner, we were all sitting together talking about the politicization of this. And I had to overemphasize to them that the best thing we can do is leave the work we do to the community that has it in hand today. That if we all try to over control this, to over politicize it, to bring too much uh, governmental dialogue and analysis on this versus continuing what we have. Well, governments are welcome. We don't exclude them. They're part of the community. But we're all sitting at the table trying to do the right thing. This is a technical task and a policy, technical policy task. We should continue doing it in this way. And they all agreed. And we will have much support growing now from Silicon Valley also for keeping governments and the US government and any particular Silicon Valley player, anyone, from controlling what we do, but rather you, the members, the participants, controlling what we do. That is the risk we have. And if we let go, if they start finding space between you and me, Oscar, and between me and Paul, and me and Yari, they will drive trucks through that to show that we are not a community, really, that this is a facade. So it's important that we maintain that unity. That's, in my opinion, the biggest danger to politicize what we do. The other danger, which is ours, in our hands, and some of you may not be as involved as others, is for us to overcomplicate the proposal to the US government. To make the proposal so complicated that it defies two key tenets, two key foundations. One is we've been telling everybody that the RIRs and ICANN and all these guys are working fine. So if we come back with a proposal that says, oh my goodness, we have to change these 560 things, that is not congruent with we're fine. Okay. The second thing is, yes, there are things ICANN could do better. I will be the first to tell you our appeals, for example, process needs improvement. We have many things we can improve, no problem. But let's not try and completely uh, overcomplicate this. If we do, this is what will happen. We will go to the US government with a proposal this big, and they'll say it's good, but you need three years to implement it. Call us in three years. Yeah. Not a good idea. <laughs> thank you. Um, so uh, just to thank you, Fadi. Uh, one last uh, request. If you were to tweet uh, to the LACNIC community, um, 
that is not here because we are like uh, more than 200 here and uh, more like 200 online. Uh, if you have to address that absent community to uh, engage in these discussions in the uh, in all the processes, what would you tweet them? The governance of the logical, technical infrastructure of the internet belongs to you. Don't let someone else tell you. Get involved and own it. If you're absent, the vacuum will be heard and someone else will come and own it. So be involved. This is the moment for you to say, we're here. If I were to make a tweet to my community, the ICANN community, I would tell them today, honestly, that in coming here, I'm affirming and I'm learning that ICANN has another 4,500 members that we should engage with and understand and serve as much as we do with our naming community. I will work with Oscar and my colleagues to make sure that ICANN understands that and directs its help and efforts to Oscar to support him in every way. This is our role, and I know that when we need help, he'll be here for us as well. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you for welcoming me here. Gracias, Fadi. Demos un aplauso, por favor. Muchas gracias por... We will now go on with the policy forum.